Hey guys, Bowser Carriger here. Today I'm counting down my top 10 games for the PlayStation 2. Now the PlayStation 2 is a gold mine of good games. I narrowed it down and I was at 30 games, so I had to narrow it down even more. So this list is really the top of the top for me. And it was really hard to do. So with that out of the way, here we go. Number 10, Metal Gear Solid 3. At first I was very skeptical of Metal Gear Solid 3. I wasn't controlling Solid Snake, there was no mini-map, and the brown color scheme most of the game had really wasn't my thing. And also the fact that I had to eat frequently and manually heal every single little injury I sustained raised my eyebrows to Mount Olympus. But this game won me over in a big way. Big Boss became just as likable as Solid Snake in the end, and since then I dare say he's become more likable to me than his son. My other issues quickly faded as well, or I simply got used to them. For me, the Metal Gear Solid games have always been more about the story than the gameplay, but I'd be lying if I said Kojima didn't really hit something unique with the gameplay in this one. The camouflage system is great, and while the eating annoyed me at first, like I said earlier, it did add to the immersion of the game. The story in the game kept me interested from beginning to end, and by the time the credits rolled, I definitely was feeling some strong emotions. I'll never forget the final boss fight in this game and the events that followed it. One thing I have to mention though, the boss battle against the end. I can't remember the last time a boss made me rage this hard. It was basically 45 minutes of this. Hey, you want to have a 45 minute sniper fight? A what? You stand around in the open, I shoot you in the face. You try to hide, I shoot you in the face. You touch my parrot, right in the face. And if I'm feeling a bit down, I say a prayer to the forest, what? and then I shoot you in the face! Why? Number 9, Rogue Galaxy. To this day, it baffles me how underrated this RPG is. So few people have played this game as criminal. Adventure is the name of the game as the main character Jaster dreams of traveling the stars. And obviously due to plot reasons, that happens. Each planet you visit is memorable and the cell shaded graphics make it so each is bursting with color and vibrance. And you know how much I love cell shaded graphics. The battle system in this game is simple and yet very, very fun. If you match the attack button three times, your character attacks three times. Yeah, so you really are controlling the action. Each input you put in equals an attack. It sounds like the battle system found in most Tales games, but it does feel different. You just have to try it for yourself to see what I mean. The battle system is the only great thing this game has either. What took me by surprise when I first played the game was how ambitious the story was and how memorable the music was. Some pretty cool things that I obviously won't spoil for you happen along the way, and it's accompanied by a beautiful score. Rogue Galaxy is just an all around great game that every RPG fan should try at least once. Years later and I'm still holding out hope for a sequel. Number 8, Shadow Hearts. Atmosphere. Such a simple thing sets this game apart from every other RPG I've ever played. It gives off a creepy early 1900s vibe and I love it. The game's music and scenery come together to create a world that you can't help but get immersed in. Our main two protagonists are Yuri and Alice, and I grew very attached to both. Yuri's a snarky badass and Alice is sweet and caring. The supporting cast is all good too, but these two really steal the show. Aside from the atmosphere, the biggest thing this game has to set apart from other RPGs is the Judgment Ring. For any action you take in battle, from attacking to using items, you use the Judgment Ring. Land it on a colored area for your action to take effect, land it on the smallest area and you get a boost of whatever you're doing. It's such a simple system but makes the game its own. There's a lot more I could talk about with the gameplay like Yuri's Fusions or the Sanity System, but I'd be here for quite a while. It's just great all over and does so many unique things. The game has two sequels, but unfortunately they didn't live up to the first one for me. Don't get me wrong, they're good games, they just have nothing on this gym. Number 7, Another Centuries Episode 3 Have you ever watched a mega anime or movie and thought, wow, I love to pilot one of those machines. This game lets you do just that. What sets this game above other games like it are the controls. They're pretty much perfect, anyone can pick them up and you'll be dodging and weaving, slashing and shooting your way to victory in no time. There's tons of shows represented here. Elreka 7, several Gundam shows, Nadesuke, Shin Getter, Macross, and more. Missions have you tackling various objectives like defending a ship or wiping out specific enemies. And if that isn't your thing, there's a very fun versus mode that you and a friend can take part in. 
From Software has everything right with this love letter to mecha fans. Music, gameplay, every single thing is on point. Number 6, Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2. These games are basically one split into two and you kind of have to play them together so I gave them both the number 6 spot. Digital Devil Saga 1 has you controlling a tribal warrior it's called the Embryon in an arena where tribes fight for survival. The only way out is to kill the other tribes. Honestly at its core is a lot like the Hunger Games. The twist however is that to sustain your sanity you have to eat your defeated rivals. Yes, eat them. Cannibalism is a huge part of these two games. It's a great adventure by the end you'll definitely grow attached to your characters as they go through some pretty good character development. Rather than summoning demons like in the Shin Megami Tensei games or spawn off of, in Digital Devil Saga your characters are the demons. What I really liked about this game is the overall freedom it gives you in building your characters. Once you learn a skill you have it forever you can equip it or unequip it whenever you want. Only problem is that with most bosses they're set up in a way so that you more or less have to use a certain set of skills to stand a fair chance. That aside is still pretty fun. And of course being an Atlas game and with Shoji Maguro on board the music is phenomenal. Hands down some of Maguro's best work. Number 5 Tales of the Abyss I had a really hard time choosing between this and Tales of Rebirth but in the end I gave a slight nod to Abyss for his character development and 3D maneuverability on the battlefield. Abyss was the third Tales game I played after Symphonia and Fantasia and I have a lot of fond memories with it. It was the first Tales game to feature fully 3D movement in battle and this alone was amazing and a big step forward for the series. The main character Luke causes a bit of a riff with people that play the game. To not mince words, he starts out as an asshole. Of course later on he gets better and I personally say that he has perfectly valid reasons for his early behavior. Some players hate early Luke, some hate later Luke, others just hate Luke altogether. I actually like him from beginning to end. It's just not often you see a main character that's just a straight up douchebag to those around him. And I thought it was amusing. Luke aside, the other characters helped make this game as well. I particularly like the main antagonist group, the God Generals. I dare say they're more interesting than the rest of the main cast. But anyways, great soundtrack, dynamic characters, a very fun battle system, and lots to do makes Tales of the Abyss a must play for any RPG fan. Number 4, Kingdom Hearts 2. Most fans of the series fell in love with it because of the first game. For me, it was the second. I played the first game, but it's only above average for me. Kingdom Hearts 2 for me is the pinnacle of the series. No Kingdom Hearts game after or before has drawn me in like it has. I love the way the game starts out with Roxas. He's likable, and by the end of his story I sympathize with him greatly. Oh, and he freaking dual wheels keyblades. Gotta love that. Moving on to Sora himself, he gets an awesome new outfit and the ability to fuse with Donald and Goofy for even more awesome looking outfits, and more badass keyblade skills. I love most of the Disney worlds, a couple of my favorites being Mulan's world and Pirates of the Caribbean. It's always nice seeing your childhood Disney movies with a few original or Final Fantasy twists thrown in. I completed this game at least three times, and I'm planning on doing my fourth run through with the final mix version. I really can't wait. Number 3, Super Robot Wars Z. While Super Robot Wars Alpha 3 is probably the most ambitious title Ben Presto has done so far, I gave the spot to Z for being more polished, and in my opinion having possibly the best story in the entire franchise. For a PS2 title, this game has some beautiful and colorful animations. It really brings these characters and mechs to life. Now, I gotta commend Ben Presto for the way they handle having so many characters in this title. Usually they just have you split your people up from time to time and then they come back together. In this game, depending on which story you pick, you'll actually split up your units for 15 stages straight, which is crazy. That's not taking into consideration other route splits. This not only lets you focus on one group, it adds immense replay value, as you have to play the game twice to experience the full events of the other path. In addition to this, the new squad platoon system puts three units into one squad and makes the supporting members actually useful, unlike in Alpha 3. This way you won't have to leave out a huge chunk of mechs you want to use every stage, like in the sequels to this game on PSP. Music wise, Van Presto truly outdid themselves with this one. The arranged music from each show represented are amazing, and the original songs created for the game are some I still listen to on a regular basis. Super Robot Wars Z is a phenomenal game and in my opinion the pinnacle of the Super Robot Wars series in terms of every element of the game being top notch. 
and more than earns a spot in my top three. Number two, Final Fantasy X. The last masterpiece in the Final Fantasy series in my honest opinion. Type Zero is amazing, but it had a couple big flaws that stopped it from being in the league of 10 and 6 for me. I'm not even sure where to begin talking about this game. Despite what people will tell you, Titus is a great protagonist and one of my personal favorites of all time. Let's just pretend 10-2 never happened and say Yuna is an amazing character as well. I shouldn't even have to tell you, but the story and music are amazing. It's a journey that had me grip from beginning to end and the characters and music really help it move along. Now one of my biggest gripes with most RPGs is that they don't let you use all your characters in a single battle. Not here, you can switch out any party member anytime you want as long as you're not KO'd or suffering from certain status effects. So simple and yet such a welcome addition. The Sphere Grid is one of my favorite skill systems ever. I like how you start with a designated role for each character and can branch out to whatever you want later on. If you've ever completed the Sphere Grid, you have my profound respect. I tried once and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I've been in this game at least four times and I'm not tired of it of the slightest. That is the mark of a great game. Number 1. Persona 4 I had a really hard time choosing between Persona 3 and Persona 4 for the number one spot. 3 is the game that introduced me to Shin Megami Tensei and has a score combining all my main genres of music into one. But in the end, I had to admit that when it comes down to it, 4 is just the better game overall. A lot of people hate showing in anime and JRPGs because of the common, friendship is power trope. I can understand that. But in my opinion, Persona 4 does it right. The friendships these characters develop doesn't feel forced and in your face all the time. Now, for those that don't know, Persona 4 has you balancing school and social life with dungeon crawling. It's a shockingly good mix. After playing through the answer segment of Persona 3, which is nothing but dungeon crawling and level grinding, the story sprinkled in here and there, I could say that the social link segment is a very good and welcome addition. If you get tired of one segment, just go do the other. The music in the game is great and almost too catchy for its own good. I guarantee you'll be humming along to one of the overworld themes eventually. I love Persona 4 and by the time the credits rolled, I was immediately ready to start my second playthrough, which is something that rarely ever happens to me with games. Now I just gotta get around to playing the updated version on the PS Vita. So there you have it, my top 10 games for the PlayStation 2. Great great system and I still have a ton of games I need to play for it. Next video in this little series of mine is going to be top 10 PSP games. Now for PlayStation 3 and also Xbox 360, I don't know what I'm going to do yet because with that generation there is a ton of overlap with those. So I don't know if I'm going to do top 5 for each system or I'm just going to make it one big video where it's top 10 and if it's on either system then it's eligible. I don't know yet. But that's the future. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. What are your top PS2 games? I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.